Algebra 2 video and in this video we'll be talking about rational equations and its functions okay now in the more more in deep equation which is known as inequalities so we will also be talking about inequalities at last but first we have to know the basic knowledge so that so let's get started with rational equation and how do you actually solve the equation? Now we learn in algebra that 2x plus 10 is equal to 0 and then you can find the value of x. But what if in, what if the value of x is, in, is used in rational equations? So let's go ahead and solve some rational equations and try to find out the value of x. Okay? So in this process you will need to know factorization. Okay? In most of the cases there, uh, you need to factorize in order to get your solution, which basically is the values of x. So let's get started with the rational um, equations. So the first and foremost would be the easiest one. So let's go start with the easiest one. So the easiest one would be x plus 8 over x is equal to 6. So how do you solve this? Well, the first thing you need to do is basically multiply both sides by x to remove the denominator. And I can't open right here so we will multiply x over here uh, then you have x present already present right here plus multiply x over here times 8 over x is equal to 6 times x over here now what this will do is basically cancel out this over here now now you multiply them together will give you x squared plus 8 is equal to 6x now the thing is to make it equal to 0 which basically gives you a quadratic equation now there's two methods you can use factorization or by using a quadratic formula now both of the method will give you the same process the same solution but the factorization is more handy as it's more faster and then quadratic function. So let's go and use quadratic function. But first, we need to make it equal to zero. So now we have x squared minus 6x plus 8, which is equal to zero. Now, if you factorize this, you end up with something like this x minus 2 times x minus 4. Now you can plug out each values and make it equal to zero. So basically be looking, it would look like x minus 4 is equal to 0. So what is the value of x? Well, the value of x would be 4 and so forth. So here you end up with the value of 2 as x. Here you would have 4 as the value of x. So you know this x is equal to 2, x is equal to 4. So in this both cases, when you when you plug in 2 or 4 you would get the value when you plug it in the formula or the equation you would get the value is equal to 6 okay this was a simple uh, simple and easy enough so let's go and start with uh, next example okay so now we have 3 x over x minus 3 which is equal to 2x plus 3 over x minus 3 now what you need to do is the most common thing now even though it may look complicated the thing is to multiply both sides by x minus 3 to remove the denominator so let's go ahead and do that so if you multiply both sides by x minus 3 times the equation, which is 3x over x minus 3, is equal to x minus 3 times 2x plus 3 over x minus 3. Now, you know, basically, this would cancel out with this. This would cancel out with this over here, leaving you 3x is equal to 2x plus 3. And it's a simple algebra, uh, algebra 1 equation that is you need to find the value of x 
Well, you can do with it by yourself and get your answer to be x is equal to 3. Okay? So if you plug in the value of 3 here, you would basically end up with the same result on both sides. Okay? So let's go ahead and do another example. And this example is pretty hard. Okay? So I want you to pay attention to well, what we are doing each and every steps. So let's go ahead and do that. Even though I will try to make it easy as possible. Simple. So the first, this equation would be 2x minus 9 over x minus 7 plus x over 2 is equal to 5 over x minus 7. Now the thing about this equation is that the denominators of this equation are different. Now before, whatever we solve, the denominators were same. So it makes us easier to multiply each side by the denominator canceling them out. So what happens when you have different denominator is equal to a different denominator. So let's go ahead and do well, the simple step equations. So now we, what we will do is basically multiply everything by 2 and x minus 7 to cancel the denominator out. And notice that when we multiply x minus 7 over here and by 2, the x minus 7 on the denominator and the multiplier cancels out, okay? So you have 2 times x minus 7 multiplied by 2x minus 9 over x minus 7. You add that to another multiplier, which is uh, 2 times x minus 7 multiplied by x over 2, which is equal to 2 times x minus 7 multiplied by 5 over x minus 7. So now let's go ahead and cancel each of them out. So this would cancel out with this, this would cancel out with this, this would cancel out with this, leaving you everything on the uh, over here, and leaving you everything in the numerator. So now all you have to do is multiply 2 by the numerator, x minus 7 by the x, 2 by 5, which is basically 10. So it's pretty easy enough, and I hope you guys can do it. So let's for, uh, move on to the next step of this equation on solving them. So how would you end up would basically be like 2 times 2x minus 9 plus x minus 7 multiplied by x, okay, which is set equal. I'm just going to erase this part as it comes in my way. Okay, so it's equal to 5 times 2. Okay, so all you have to do is multiply and at the end of the day, you will get your equation to look like, make it equal to zero. That's the first thing you need to notice. Minus 3x minus 28 is equal to zero. Now, if you're confused, how, do, how did I get 20, negative 28 instead of um, negative 18? Remember that you have to make your equation set up to equal to zero. Okay, so over here you have positive 10, subtract on both sides negative 18 minus 10 would give you minus 28 so now you need to use the factorization for um, factorization of this uh, quadratic function and you would basically end up with something like this okay so the factorization for this formula would be x minus 7 x plus 4 which is set equal to 0 Now since this is the case, we know that whenever we plug in x minus 7 is equal to 0, we would end up with 7. Over here, we would end up with negative 4. Now this means that x takes on value of negative 4 and x takes on value of 7. Okay, so this is the case over here. Now let's go ahead and solve another example. Okay, another example, okay, going back to the basics, to refresh our memory, let's go ahead and solve this example over here. 
So the example says 14 over z is equal to 9 minus z. Okay? So what you need to do is multiply both sides by z, giving you z times 14 over z is equal to 9 minus z. Put that in bracket because you're multiplying it by z over here. Now what this will do is cancel off this by this, okay, and that's pretty much it over here. So 14 is equal to multiply 9z minus z squared, okay, make it equal to 0. So when you do that, it will basically 0 is equal to uh, negative, whoops. Thing is, since it's negative, what you need to do is add up over here, which will make the z values positive. So here you would be have z squared minus, whoops, plus 4, no, minus 9z, whoops, minus 9z plus 14 is equal to 0. Now you need to use the factorization formula, which basically, uh, of this quadratic function, which basically is x minus 7 and x minus 2 which is set equal to 0. So 0 is equal to this factorized formula. Now we know x can take on values of 7 and x can take on values of 2. So the solution for this uh, rational equation would be 7 and 2. So let's go on and do another example. Now, this would be an inequality. So, we have solved enough problems of rational equations. Now, what we will do is basically solve an example of rational inequality and see how do we actually solve them. There is nothing different. All you have to do is whatever the inequality is, you basically make it equal to, make an equal sign. So, let's go and explore that idea by doing an example. So, here you would have first example of inequality would be 8 over x plus 5 which is less than or equal to 4 now what you need to do is multiply both sides by x plus 5 which gives you 8 over x plus 5 is less than or greater than it less than or equal to x plus 5 times 4 over right here. Now the tricky part is what makes this value equal to 0? Well we know it's negative 5 so what I encourage you to do is write x and negative 5 over here. Don't do nothing to it yet. Just put a reminder over here because there is a long method of doing this problem and I kept doing it over and over and came up with this idea. Okay, so this is the easiest way you can actually solve an inequality, of which is the rational inequality. Now you basically need to solve this further. Just keep this aside and keep it in reminder. Now when you do that, this will cancel out with this one, leaving you 8 is less than or equal to 4x, 4x plus 20. Subtract 20 from both sides, you would basically be getting a negative 12 less than or equal to 4x divide on both sides you'd get a uh, y oops negative 3 is less than or equal to x now since this is the case where x is greater all you need to do is flip the sign over here which since x is greater here x will be small okay so these are the two inequalities and this is the answer of this rational inequalities and you see you can try to use different methods and all that but you would basically end up with the same solution now to check this procedure let's go ahead and do another uh, two examples of this one would which would be a word problem okay so let's go ahead and do that an 
this is the easiest method uh, that you can actually solve the rational inequalities. So here now you have in this example 9 over x plus 3 which is less than 6. Okay, so here you would have multiply both sides by x plus 3. Okay, here and here you end up with 9 is less than 6 times x plus 3. But before you move on, you need to keep asking yourself what makes the value of x to be equal to 0. So the value of x would be negative 3. So just write it down x and x base negative 3. To, it could be either greater than or uh, less than. Okay, to know that, you need to solve this further. So 9 is less than 6x plus 18. Subtract 18 both, on both sides, giving you negative 9 is less than uh, 6x. Divide on both sides by uh, 6, you would end up with something that is uh, <coughs> x is greater than negative 9 over 6. Okay, so 3. 3 goes into 2 over here. 3 goes into 3, leaving you x. Okay, leaving you x is greater than negative 3 over 2. So since x is greater than over here, you flip the sign and it would be less than over here. Okay, so this is the basic concept over here. Okay. So that's the case over here. Now what we'll do is basically we have come across to the last point where we'll go and solve a word problem. So let's go ahead and solve the word problem. Okay, so here we'll be solving the word problem and you can see the word problem over here on the text area. So you, you read the example and we'll go and solve the uh, problem over here. So the example asks us what is the speed of the, um, speed of the boat, okay? upstream and downstream. So how do we actually solve this example? Well, we involve a formula that basically gives us the total time is equal to the time upstream plus times downstream. So let's go ahead and write that uh, formula down. So, so here it would basically be t time or total time is equal to time upstream plus time downstream okay now the total time uh, the problem gives us is 4 is equal to the time upstream would basically be uh, you use the formula DRT uh, D distance is equal to t a rate times time and make it equal to time so what is the time equal to well it's the distance over t uh, uh, rate uh, distance over the rate okay so it basically be 3 you're moving 3 and it, when you're going um, you do a 2 minus C because you're going upstream now you're against you're going against the water stream so it'd be 2 minus C and when you're going downstream the the water is helping you uh, move downwards so here it would basically be 3 over 2 plus C. Now easy concept to understand. There's nothing much hard to it. So now what you'll do is basically multiply 2 minus C and 2 plus C on both of the uh, sides. So here it would basically look like 2 minus C times 2 plus C times 4 okay. times 4 is equal to 2 minus c times 2 plus c uh, times 3 over 2 minus c which is added to uh, 2 minus c 2 plus c times and since I'm running out of space I'm just going to write here times 3 over 2 plus c okay since this is the case we cancel out 2 minus c with this one over here, 2 plus c with this one over here. So this leaves you, when you multiply it together over here, you get negative 16 minus 4c squared, which is equal to 6 plus 3c 
plus 6 minus 3c. Now basically you add up and make it equal to 0. So here you would have 16 minus 4c squared. You add up all this and you would get 12 over here. Because plus 3c minus 3 cancels out. So leaving you 6 plus 6 which is equal to 12. Now here you can, uh, <clears throat> what you can do is subtract 16 on both sides okay which will give you okay since you're doing that you do that and it will give you since I'm running out of space here it would give you minus 4c squared which is equal to minus 4 divide on minus 4 whoops well you can do that divide on both sides by negative 4 which will give you c squared is equal to 1 square root on both sides so c is equal to plus or minus uh, 1 because square root of 1 which is equal to 1 so plus or minus 1 over here so what you can what this means is that when you're going against the stream you would basically use a formula that says 2 minus c so the c value is 1 now we can the thing over here is that you cannot take minus 1 because you cannot move in negative speed. So all we have to do is take a positive value, which is the 1. So instead of doing 2 plus c, and we know that c is, one, uh, c is equal to 1 positive, so 2 plus 1 gives you 3, and 2 minus c, which is equal to 1. So you're moving, when you're going downstream, you're going at 3 miles per hour, and when you're going upstream, you're going at 1 mile per hour. So it's pretty much easy problem. So I hope you guys uh, like this video. Thanks for watching.